It's Brooklinen's birthday, everybody, and it's time to celebrate all their amazing quality products from their bed sheets to the duvet covers to their robes and towels. My favorite thing that they have is their loungewear. It's the softest things you can possibly put on your body. Brooklinen's birthday is almost here, and you're invited to their major annual sale for their ninth birthday. Brooklinen is giving customers 25% off their award-winning home essentials. Looking to upgrade your entire space with Brooklinen bundles, you can choose bed, bath, or both. Even better, you can bundle and save time and money. Pick your favorite colors, weaves, and sizes because everything can be customized. Shop 25% off at brooklinen.com. Don't miss out, and it's only happening once a year. Listening after the sale, visit brooklinen.com and sign up for emails to keep you up to date on exclusive offers, new products, and much more. That's B R O. Okay, L I N E N dot com, Brooklinen dot com. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Vile Files. Is it free- freestyle? Freestyle. Oh, going deep. Well, you know what? Honestly, we have two going deeper episodes this week because today we have Marshall Glaze, cousin of Justin Glaze, friend of show, uh, fresh off his time at the the debacle that was the Love is Blind reunion, um, which we, you know, I was going to go to the event and then I didn't. Are you glad you didn't? Yes and no. It would have been kind of fun to to see the debacle in person the chaos yeah it would have been kind of fun to see all that live and 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 meet everyone i suppose but i was busy being a romantic that's what i was You're doing so cute uh for those of you who didn't watch my instagram so nally went home to visit family uh last week uh she, um and visit her dad and her sister in savannah georgia and that's where she lived when we met and so nally and i had uh, talked about it's something that we have been kind of focusing a lot on our relationship about, about staying connected and finding ways to be connected and and as a as a newly engaged man i think uh, romance is something that i was always really good at in my younger days and then in my as my cynicism grew in to my body um it's harder for me to tap into but it's been a focus of mine Anyway, so when she went to uh, Savannah, I had this idea of, and we've been in New York plenty of times, and we stayed at the Williamsburg Hotel plenty of times, um, but it was really important to me that we kind of did this kind of recreation of our very first weekend together, and it was important to me that she was in Savannah, right? As opposed to us flying to New York together, I wanted us to meet up in New York just like we did the first time. And so we kind of literally reenacted like the first moment we laid on on each other. Like it's kind of cool to be able to revisit the very first spot where we met. You know, we just kind of did a bunch of series of things where we stopped by the first place uh, that we had dinner. And then we, then we went to Peter Luger's very famous steak place in Brooklyn. That wasn't on our first weekend together. That was we went there because that was like a very meaningful date where she, that was the first time Natalie said she had feelings for me and tried to define the relationship in which I I turned her down. And on Instagram she wrote that I said thanks for sharing. I didn't actually say thanks for sharing <laughs> for all the literal people out there. But it was this very cool to revisit. And then we hung out with our friends Charlene and Andy who were a part of that first weekend together. And actually, well, uh, I'll it, no maybe I shouldn't. Oh, never mind. Sorry. It was some wedding planning details that we we decided on um, in New York, but we'll share later. Anyway, how I'm what intrigued. What a tease! Yeah, I, yeah. I was like, um. well, I was gonna share it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the tease. I don't know, uh, but we had a great weekend, and then we flew back, and then the Love Is Blind reunion was a, a giant mess. Someone at Netflix is getting fired for sure. Oh, multiple people. Feel, <laughs> you feel bad? Of course, you I feel, feel bad. so bad for it. Like that is the worst nightmare in the world. Having a, That's a fuck up. Having a huge fuck up on that scale. A major platform like Netflix, a streaming service, and then you have like other platforms, like for example, like Prime, you know, does NFL games, which is obviously a live sporting event, you mm-hmm. know, and all these streaming services are, you know, it's not a coincidence that, you know, there's a reason why they're doing this because, you know, they, they did the Chris Rock thing without a hitch, but for them to have this much of a fuck up is 
It's, it's really bad. But like the stress to Amanda's point, I worked for the Big Ten Network for a while as like a sideline coordinator, like on headset. And it is the most stressful thing you will ever do. Live like, TV? Yes. That was on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, I know. Just saying from the production <laughs> side and like people yelling in your ear and it's you're intense. like have no idea what yeah. you're supposed to be doing. It is awful. No, Someone it's... is going to talk about this day in therapy for years yes. and years Probably. and years to come. It's going to be BC and AD of this specific day in their life. <sighs> Well, Marshall talks to us a lot of things he he probably will talk about in therapy. Yeah. I, th- I, th- I thought he was very generous. He's super self-aware yeah. in a really impressive way. We got way. some Jackie and, and, and Josh T. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We talk timelines, obviously. We love a good timeline. I love, I love a good timeline. Time we love a good timeline. <laughs> Uh, anything we want to get into? Uh, we saw, obviously, Coachella weekend was a big weekend. We saw a lot of Vanderpump news out there. Raquel is... She's in. She entered a voluntary facility for mental health counseling. Uh, and for her. the statement said Raquel and her family decided before the relationship was discovered that she would enter the facility. Hmm. She had planned to admit herself before the Vanderpump Rules reunion was taped on March 23rd. She was scheduled to go in pre reunion, but decided that she wanted to finish her filming commitment. Bravo and production were aware and in support of her journey toward better mental health. I, why do I hate th- that aspect of the. Like, good for her for going. Mm-hmm. The whole timeline of... That she was going to go before. She was going to go. really had nothing then, to do then, with then, the relationship. Then, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I guess. I'm glad she's... Has been very quiet. Going. We'd still love to have her on the show. Well, I can't stop by now. She's not there. Well, I don't think the, a way to get her on the show is you knocking on her door. Well, you never know. I, honestly, no, I the know. power of... I know. The power if of someone neighborly knocked love. on my door. If Allie knocked asked, on my door with a said, bottle hey, I have a wine, podcast. Would you like to she's come not, on Allie's it? Allie's smart. She's not going to immediately you. do that. Thank Allie's going to win her over. They're going to walk their dogs together. They're going to become oh, well, genuine friends. Been do- and then she's going to be like, Why hey, haven't I'm going to level with that? you. Why haven't you? You literally, you keep going back and forth. You're oscillating <laughs> between two extremes here. No, no, no. You've told me be to friend, go to her door. Be your friend. Be your friend. You told me then it wasn't going to be effective. Which one is it? I don't think if you knock on her door and say, hey, I work for this guy who has a podcast, you should come on, that that's going to be well received. But if you become her friend. I'll tell her all about the drama that's going on on the floor. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know who seems to have a new friend is Ariana because she was macking on she a man. Killing it. Yeah. He's a, some kind of fitness trainer. He's got a man bun. And it seems like they're really enjoying each Sounds other's like company. Sounds like a great rebound. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. what a fun weekend. Just like go make out. Yeah. Was Tom Sandoval seen wearing a, a name tag, essentially? He shaved his mustache. I don't know. And then he was also hanging out with some other person, for, apparently, who was on Vanderpump a while ago. I don't know. Oh, does it say T Sandy on it? Yes. T it's Sandy. Like, it's like embroidered. So the 40 year old. So why ma- does he try to look like he's liter? I mean, I it's guess he ter- is in a band. He's really trying to channel like a boy band energy. But like, he's arguably the most hated man in pop culture yeah and he's out there just fully embracing t sandy that is is a man who loves attention regardless of the type right yeah how else can you distinguish that just going to coachella yeah i was shocked he was there when that is like so much considered maybe the center of controversy of controversy of like when there were all those rumors about raquel hooking up with a tom at Coachella and it's something that they do together, you know, and the, and the proposal that he helped James with was like, there's just so many reasons that Coachella is baked into Vanderpump drama. So for him to show his face, there is shocking. Oh, and then last week's episode, he did that. You see that scene where the clear, ass tap. I grabbed, he grabbed, he grabbed. It was like ass. a little, a cup. It was like a, a cup, yeah. Yeah. Right in front of her. She, she did cup. the thing that I feel like all girls have done where you like, don't expect to get a little spank and you're like, woo. Yeah. That's like what Raquel did behind Ariana. Ariana turned around for a second. He timed that. It was like threading a needle. Precision. He just doesn't care. Yeah. He just doesn't care about anyone but himself. I just, if if I'm in the trying to give the benefit of the doubt hat on, I just, how do you, how? I know Howie did. And I can't wait to talk to Howie Mandel about that. Yeah, I think it will be so interesting to see what Howie's like perspective is after the fact. Because it it feels like most of the criticism centers around the fact going into it, he just didn't have a sense of scope of this Who's situation. Who's Sheena? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you be with us early May? Yeah, yeah, first week of May. First week of May. Anyway, um, it seems like uh, Ariana's heart is healing and we are happy for her. Oh, she's and thriving. She's on, on the mend. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for her. 
she she's like shooting with Bloomingdale. She's modeling. I think it was in New York, or I saw some like behind the scenes footage. Rumors of Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, a Lifetime. Now movie, she's in I the think. Lifetime. It's movie. hot right now. Yeah, she's on top. Well, again, we have uh, Marsha with us. It's a great episode. Before we get there, don't forget we have Vile Files Plus is just crushing the content world. If you did, if you have not listened to the Ask Nick episode that dropped yesterday, do yourself a favor. Uh, for other people tuning in for Marshall, we do this show where people call in and have these variety of stories. Some of our crazy stories, some of our relatable stories. They focus around relationships. We offer some advice. People find it helpful. It's an excellent episode. The first caller is a wild story. We already have an update from that caller. That update drops this Friday on Vile Files Plus. It's an insane update. Your, your mouse will be on the floor. Don't miss out. Go to vilefiles.com to sign up for Vile Files Plus. It's a seven-day free trial. It's super easy. A couple clicks. You can listen to it the same way you listen to the Vile Files. Plus, we have Micah on Thursday of Going Deeper. We get into the ass pat. Speaking of ass pats and ass grabs, Paul just to groping. Her made. Groping her friend. Her friend seemed to be... Her friend smiled. Smiled. We, we get into it with Micah about her friendship picker, uh, her relationship with Paul, uh, the things that happen post-wedding, all of that and more with Micah. You definitely do not want to miss that. We'll also get into the reunion uh, all, uh, in the episode with Micah, so we'll break down our, our final thoughts about you know season four, the reunion, the proposals, things like that uh, with, uh, with in, on that episode of Going Deeper on Thursday. All right. Marshall Glaze, everybody. Marshall. Yo, what's up? Welcome. Thanks for having me. How is your heart? Heart's good. Your heart's good? Heart's good, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Not Thank you for fine. asking. He's though. fine. Now he's fine. Uh, we, we like to dig deep here, Marshall. Yeah, you're trying yeah, it. You're, trying, like it. To you're dig, trying I'm fine. We like to dig honestly, deep here. Honestly, we, we, I'm good. I'm good. The Love is Blind fan base loves you. They, uh, they, they, they wanted to protect your heart. You know, you. I think for a lot of people watching this show, I think a lot of people were taken back and impressed. But you, you know, you're what, you're 26, uh, 27, 27. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday! Thanks. Somewhere along the line, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, I guess a young man, so to speak, in today's dating climate. You know, 27 is not that young, but I think as daters, were were, I don't know, maybe maturing later in life. I don't fucking know. Men, men of also the the stereotype, men uh, mature later in life. But mm-hmm. you demonstrated on the show at least the desire to open up emotionally and connect, you know, and be vulnerable. And I think a lot of people appreciated that. Um, and so, you know, we just want to take this time to better get to know you and yeah. and peel back some of those kind of unanswered questions of all the you and Jackie drama because it it seems of all the storylines that seems still to be the most incomplete in terms of. What happened? What went down? Jackie and, and Josh kind of chickened out uh, when it came to the reunion. I mean, if nothing else, it would have been nice for them to at least zoom in live so that you know people could ask questions, but they had this kind of private one-on-one interview with, with Vanessa, which I don't know, kind of seemed lame to me. But anyway, so thank you for coming. And uh, yeah, our hope is that we can just dive into all that and, yeah. and better understand you and and go from there sounds good thanks for having me yeah so uh as as some who went into the show when you went into the show when you decided to sign up for love is blind what was your what why did you sign up like what was your goal and intentions when uh you went on to the show so it's funny because i had not seen love is blind at all at all uh, i'm not a reality tv person okay uh, the only reality tv i've seen was, was justin was justin yeah. season and even so, I halfway watched it, kind of fast forwarding to see him only. Well, you probably fast forwarded for most of the season because just <laughs> for a guy who was the runner up, yeah. it was... <laughs> some reaction shots. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I the way that it was pitched to me, I I thought that it was the the pilot season, and it was it was really interesting. Um, you didn't the, do any homework before. The only someone's homework, like, "Hey, it's season four, Love Is Blind." You well, didn't... <laughs> well, they didn't say it was season four. Oh, okay, they didn't say it was season four. Right. And so I went through about a, uh, two weeks of the casting process, and then that's when I was like, "Wait a minute, they're saying season four. So that's when I started to ask questions. I asked Justin. Justin said it's huge, and then that's I, I took his word for it. And then I looked on Netflix, and I was like, "Oh, okay, there's there's a season. There's another season coming out. Okay, okay, this is this is a pretty big deal." 
And did you so, watch a little bit of that prior to going on? I did. Okay. I did about two weeks before going into the pods. I binged uh, the first season and uh, the second season. And what was your thought? Uh, I thought that it was exactly how they pitched it to me. And I, I was even more excited to go. Okay. Yeah. What was your kind of preparation of getting engaged, getting married? Like what, what was exciting about it to you as it relates to the expectations of the show? Yeah, I think that I've always been ready to get married. I mean, this isn't my first engagement. I was engaged before. Oh, okay. Um, you like me. And, and so yeah. I just, I was just so wrapped up in the thought of finding love in a unique way and having it documented. Um, that, that was, that was a really awesome opportunity. I feel like it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. So jumped at it. What happened with that first engagement? When, when were you engaged? Uh, I, that was, I was 20, 23. Three okay, and it just it just didn't work out, you know. We 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 just decided to call it off. It was a very amicable split, okay, and it it was just not the right time. How did you realize that? Uh, well, a lot of factors actually. Uh, we uh we moved into and in we actually moved across the country together. Uh, we met in the Baltimore D.C. area and moved in uh to an apartment in Oakland, mm -hmm. and that's when the pandemic hit. So we were on top of each other at all times and there was nowhere to go. So I can partially blame the pandemic, but also we just realized that we were better off as friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. And was that a difficult period in your life? Because it's something like I first got engaged, uh, well, oh, how old was I? 27, 28 ish. I don't know. For me, it was a very difficult for a lot of reasons, but the, you know, I ultimately, I think the biggest reason was. I think as a young man, you have all these ideas of love and you, you know, uh, I think all people kind of fantasize and have these expectations of what love's going to be like for them. Yeah. You know, I'm only going to get engaged once, married once. No, I'm not going to get cheated on. We don't anticipate uh, tragedy, uh, I think, of any kind, uh, yeah. usually uh, as, as young people. And yeah. then we experience them. And so here you are, a young man get engaged i'm sure uh in the early stages it was very kind of intense and fun and exciting and then mm -hmm. it didn't work out yeah how did you deal with that disappointment what was that like actually i wouldn't call it disappointment i think that it was more a learning for me okay um you and, weren't disappointed at all no 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 uh because it, we had been together for uh for three years prior so well not three years prior but up until that point it was three years and okay. so we learned a lot about each other and it just dissolved how it should have and so there was no disappointment i just took a lot of lessons from it so that's when um it was a year after that when uh love is blind reached out and okay. that's when i said okay i'm gonna give it another shot all right yeah so you're on the show mm -hmm. was jackie the only person you really connected with um or were there other other people yeah no there were other people um Keisha, uh i connected with uh, kendra as well and um i mean tiffany also uh but but the age difference and and i just felt like her and brett were would be better together sure uh, but yeah keisha and kendra were definitely in my uh top three okay yeah uh when did you really feel like your connection with jackie was something that you thought you wanted to focus and invest on honestly from day one uh i had just known that she was she was at the top of my list. What was it about that connection? You know, and I'm guessing like, you know, again, yeah. or how much did your previous experience and your previous engagement, how much, if at all, did that, was it that in the back of your mind in terms of using that experience to help guide you into this kind of crazy, intense experience that is love is blind? Yeah. Uh, you, you, you try to take all the lessons that you've learned in all of your experiences in life and try to apply it but <laughs> this was just such a unique experience that honestly a lot of those lessons went out the window because mm -hmm. it was a very pressurized situation and i gravitated towards jackie because it was easy we were easy how the moment that we stepped in there she made me very comfortable uh she 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 has this this persona in the pod she had this persona that was just encapsulating she would come in and introduce herself in a very unique way. Can you give us an example? Can you do a Jackie impression? <laughs> yeah, this is Jackie B from the 253. You know, okay. that, was, that was her thing. She, so she had a lot of personality, a lot of charisma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. 
She had a lot of ribs. And uh, that's what uh, pushed me towards her. And ultimately, that's what, uh, that's what captured my attention uh, and, and, and took it away from the other women in the pods. What were some of the other things that you bonded over? You know, especially, you know, with these types of shows, we all know that there's just hours and hours and hours mm -hmm. of footage that yeah. we, we don't get to see. Yeah. Um, so what were some of the moments that maybe you and Jackie shared? And I'm kind of interested from your point of view. I'm like, obviously the relationship is over or whatever, but I think people want to put themselves inside of the pods, right? Like, yeah. what is that like? That's crazy experience to not be able to see someone. And how can you fa possibly fall in love with someone you can't see, et cetera, et cetera. So after the initial charisma that is Jackie, what were some things, especially if you could shed some light on, on moments that we didn't get to, sh to see mm -hmm. that you were like, oh, that was just like a great moment. It really made me feel connected. It really made me feel like this is a person I, I might want to get engaged to. Yeah. If you've ever seen Dragon Ball Z, is this, there's this thing called the hyperbolic time chamber okay, where time just works differently sure. in there. So yeah. you can spend a week in the hyperbolic time chamber, but it's a day out in the real world. That's how it felt in the pod. Sure. And we spent a lot of time. It was quality time. We didn't have our phones. We had no distractions. We talked about literally everything. And I feel like if there's anything that people should know about Jackie and myself is that we come from similar backgrounds and in similar cities. I'm from Baltimore. She's from Tacoma. <laughs> I, I made a joke that Tacoma is like the Baltimore, Washington. And that's how we bonded because of the similarities between the cities that we grew up in and, and just her, her energy and my energy, I feel like matched in the pods. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how we bonded. Did you guys talk about, um, like what you like and the opposite sex in terms of energy and how they are in relationships? Because as we know, after the pods mm -hmm. and you guys went to, was it Mexico? Mm -hmm. you know things took a shift where all of a sudden jackie started acting like you know you weren't meeting her expectations and was yeah. saying some kind of it kind of sounded fairly toxic it's like it, it was weird like jackie was the one demonstrating toxic masculinity <laughs> weirdly enough you know um <laughs> but did that that you know the to the type of energy that she's looking for in a guy you know that was mm -hmm. kind of that was a nice way of saying what Jackie seemed to be articulating. Yeah, we definitely talked a lot about, you know, the, the traits that we want to see in our partner. Obviously, it's evident that, uh, that she didn't quite live up to uh, what she had said that she was um, in the pods. What and was the biggest surprise for you? Like, when, w was there a moment in Mexico or any time after where you thought to yourself, this, this isn't the person I fell in love with? That's a, that's a very good question. Uh, and and, and, and yeah. I would say that the, the biggest thing for me was, uh, was, was just the, the very blatant personality shift. And Jackie had this very serious, all about a demeanor in the pods. And then when we got to Mexico, it was like she wanted to play play. Like she wanted to have fun and, and get drunk in Mexico and, and enjoy the vacation. And that's not what it was about. Like, if you go to the pool scene, you rarely see me because she's out having fun. And I'm like, do your thing, whatever. I'm going to go chill by the grill, talk to the guys who are grilling this good ass lobster. And you have your fun, whatever. And because I wasn't there to have fun with everybody. I was there to enjoy my time with her. And it wasn't reciprocated. You wanted to continue that kind of intimate quality time. Yeah. 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 And we had that. I'm not saying that we didn't. But there were a lot of times where it was more about enjoying Mexico rather than enjoying our engagement. Did it feel like Jackie was there to vacation rather than like I, I felt like she connection? had a hard time delineating between the two. Between having a vacation and having a romantic getaway. I want to go back to when you were in the pods. Mm-hmm. And I say this kind of as a joke, but you, you do know not to pick a fight with a guy with cotton ear, right? Like, you know. <laughs> hey, bro, listen. Like, <laughs> listen. I honestly. Did you know? I was. 
Wait, so, so what is cotton ear? How do you not know what cotton ear is? It's, it's cauliflower ear. Cauliflower ear, sorry. Okay. <laughs> cauliflower ear. Cauli- yeah, yeah, yeah. You know not to pick a fight with a guy with cauliflower ear. Yeah. Cotton ear, sorry. <laughs> I, cauliflower. I, I was picking up what you're Thank you. I was never going to physically fight Josh. And that that was banter between my producer and I. No, I know. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, there was a time where, uh, and it was at Chelsea's birthday party. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> he was in my face. Yeah. And, and I literally wanted to punch him in his face. He probably would have won the fight. I don't care. But sure. I wanted to punch him in his face. Back into the pods, though, minus his shit giving, as much as... The, w- the one thing where I didn't quite understand you, because for the most part, I really enjoyed watching you. I really show, I, I liked the kind of character you're, you, you demonstrated. But it confused me why you were so upset with Josh in the pods. Yeah. Because to me, it was like, what did Josh owe you? You know, like to me, it, it came across, and again, maybe we didn't see it mm-hmm. accurately, but it came across as you built a connection with Jackie. Mm-hmm. You were open about that connection with the boys mm-hmm. i don't know what jackie said to the p- other people she was dating including mm-hmm. josh mm-hmm. but it also while watching it e- people in the pods were kind of aware of the other connections people were 100%. forming right mm-hmm. but it sounded like josh just decided to keep that shit to himself which to be honest i don't have a problem with me either uh but it seemed like you took exception to that and so can you clear that up as to why you seem so upset in that moment when, when Jackie told you, hey, there's another connection I have that kind of caught you off guard and, you know, look, he's going to leave if I leave. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, maybe that was true. Maybe yeah. that was true. You know, they're still together. So maybe he only liked Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason why I was so upset, uh, there are actually multiple reasons. So I had had no issue with with learning the fact that Josh was seeing her. Mm hmm. I knew that we were all there dating each other, you sure. know, yeah. that was not the issue. Um, the issue was one, when I learned that it was Josh, uh, Josh and I had a very, very deep connection. Like we, like a friendship, we, we were almost like Brett, like Brett and, okay. and myself, we were almost to that level. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting here bearing my soul to this dude about a girl that he is also in love with. So I felt like I slighted him as much as he's sliding me and let me just tell the real here he didn't just say that to jackie the fact that he was going to pack his bags and leave if he wasn't leaving with him he said it to monica too oh so that's why i got upset like this is a day he was spitting game this is a day before proposal yeah this is the epitome of the pods experience the proposal day and you're coming in here and you're going to say that thing to two women at the same time that's why i got upset but when I talked to him, and they didn't air a lot of it, when I talked to him, it was a miscommunication. He quite literally was just saying he didn't mean to, to cause any rift with anybody. He was just articulating himself the only way that he knew how. And so I was like, oh, okay, cool. I mean, I'm never going to tell you to not go after anything that you don't want, but I feel like you're going to get your heart broken because there's a very g- good possibility that I'm leaving here with Jackie. And now she's crying over here because she's torn and we're stuck in this thing. You just created drama. You just created a love triangle. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. And I mean, we hugged it out after that. Sure. It, like it was, it was all, it was all good. Yeah. So yeah, they didn't really seem to show your friendship with Josh at all, which, which that makes Mm-mm. a little sense. Honestly, up until a couple of days ago, I, I still had no issue with Josh. And, and now it's just like, I don't want to, I don't want to be your friend, but I'm also not your enemy. So it's, it's kind of, yeah. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jackie's the one who to me seems to, uh, really have shown a lot of disrespect towards you. I mean, you know, Josh, it's like, he's just the other guy, mm-hmm. so to speak, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of collateral damage in a sense. Yeah. 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 I mean, Josh wasn't in a relationship with you. I mean, the, the friendship, you know, it seems like that. That w- you guys were really bonding, but it sounds like you guys realized yeah. that maybe you weren't going to be friends anyway. Yeah, and, and, and from his point of view, um, and, and what he's told me is that he, he didn't say how he felt about Jackie because he didn't want to, uh, to deter me uh, from getting in my own way. You know what I'm saying? So, Do you believe that? When did he say that? Was that recently? Uh, a text message yesterday. So, wait, what did he send you? He sent me a text message. What did it say? 
Uh, he said a lot of stuff. You can bring it up? No. Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. Marshall, we got to push you. No, <laughs> no. Private between Josh and myself, and that, and it'll stay that way. But I'll I'll say what I can, and and what I will say is that he, um, he told me that he didn't want to step in, and he told me that in the pods. So I mean, if there's footage of that, then they can release it, whatever. But he didn't want to get in the way of, of the way that I was feeling because I was professing my love for Jackie every single day. Sure. But what does he mean he didn't want to get in the way? Um, like he was doing you a favor? That kind of sounds condescending. Yeah, and it, and it got brought up at Chelsea's birthday party where he said that he, he put my feelings over his and now he's going to choose himself and put his feelings over mine. But I'm like, you could have did that five week, four or five weeks ago. Like, what's, what's the difference? And so I take it with a grain of salt, but at least he reached out, you know? Years of photos, videos, and important documents across all your devices that can be cataloged in one shared library. I know it sounds too good to be true, but it's not because Malio Photo Apps is your solution to have a great place to share and store all the important qualities and photos that your family documents so that everyone can enjoy them together. When my grandmother has the family over for Christmas, one of her favorite things to do is to get out these huge shoe boxes full of family photos and she'll go through them. And sometimes we'll spend a really long time looking for one specific event or photo. And so I think one of the things about Milio that is so awesome is that it lets you tag uh, and categorize photos. So you can search by person, you can search by event. And so not only do you have all of these uh, photos and documents, whatever is important to you and your family in one place. It's accessible and organized. Trust me, Milio is the photo storage solution you have been looking for. I've arranged a special limited time offer for my listeners. Get 25% off your first year of Milio when you sign up for an annual plan. To get this offer, just go to my special URL, mylio.com slash podcast 25. That's M-Y-L-I-O dot com slash podcast 25. Get 25% off your first year at mylio.com slash podcast 25. This show is sponsored by Better Sleep. Natalie and I were staying in Brooklyn uh, over the weekend. Love, love Brooklyn. It's a lot of fun where we stay. The only thing is it's kind of party central sometimes at night on the weekends, a little noisy. That's okay because we had Better Sleep, which has a, an amazing assortment of wonderful sleep sounds. Uh, we love a little brown noise. Uh, we also love some thunderstorm. Over 200 soothing sounds and a range of smart features to help you sleep faster, deeper, and longer. Natalie and I love Better Sleep. They have such a variety of some amazing sounds that help you sleep. Explore audio tracks from categories such as ASMR, brainwaves, meditation, stories, and more. The meditation one's also a big hit in our family. 55 million downloads and counting. So, so many people are already benefiting from Better Sleep and you can too. It was named App of the Day over 65 times on the Apple App Store. That's incredible. You know how many apps there are for you to be the app of the day 65 times? One of the more positively viewed apps in the Apple Store, over 600,000 plus reviews. Rest is incredibly important. Your health is very dependent on it. If you're not sleeping well, the, the rest of your overall, your mentals, your physical health, it, it's just all, it's all suffering from it. So get better sleep with better sleep and get those amazing sleep sounds so that you can sleep better. Better sleep collaborate with the world-renowned sleep specialist at Oxford University, Professor Dr. Russell Foster to help you achieve your better sleep. When you sleep better, you feel better, improve your quality of life in as little as one week. Download Better Sleep from your App Store or Google Play. That's Better Sleep on the App Store or Google Play. Better Sleep starts now with Better Sleep. So you and Jackie were back in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, at first, honestly, you know, early on, I was like, okay. I, I, it, I seemed, you seemed like one of the couples that was like, okay, I, I like the... Marshall seems like emotionally mature, you know, like Jackie maybe can kind of, you guys seemed like you could balance each other out a little bit, right? And we were. But that, that changed obviously very quickly. You know, she's in Mexico. She's having a hard time determining whether it's, you know, fun time or vacation time or here to build a connection. But then she, did she mention any of this family stuff in the pods? Because that seemed to be like a massive excuse when, when, th when, Anytime she was kind of emotionally taxed, she would bring up her family. And it sounds like I know her dad's dealing with some health stuff. But me personally, I've been in this world far too long. Like, it just seems like some people, just like if, if your family members are too sick, don't go on TV. 
But I'm curious as someone who like got to meet this person and talked for hours and hours and hours, how much did her family life and her responsibilities that she said she had and the health of her father or anyone else in the family, how much did that come up? Well, first I'd like to say I'm praying for her father's health. I had no idea that he had cancer. Okay. So it didn't come up at all. Had no idea. You think that Um, would be an important like thing to bring up while, you know, pouring your soul to someone. Yeah. And I, I, I knew that she had an interesting relationship with her parents. Um, but I, I had no idea that it was that, that was that, that was so did kind you of, feel like, like, it, did you think it was, she was kind of bringing it up after, cause it just, it, while it was there, it kind of, quite honestly, it just seemed like she, you know, she saw you, she met you. It, 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 it quickly seemed like Jackie decided that you weren't her type, mm-hmm. you know, and all this love is blind, you know is love blind? Can we build a connection, you know, past the superficial? It sure, it sure seemed like Jackie's, Jackie doesn't think so at all. I think her demeanor quickly changed. Um, she just decided, you know, Marshall's not, not my guy, you know, and then she seemed to bring up that stuff when it seemed to serve her the best. Did you feel that way as as well? Uh, That's how it came across. No, no. I think that it was just her clarifying I like to give people the benefit of the doubt and she may not have wanted to talk about, I, I know she didn't want to talk about her family on camera and it could very well be because that's very tough to talk about um, her father being ill and, and I understand, you know, I'm a very understanding guy, which is, which is you also are, a very yeah. wild part of this whole thing is I've always been understanding. I've always been the one in her corner. And to be, you know, a villain in her eyes, that's kind of wild. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I would that's agree. wild. But yeah, I don't think that it was opportunistic of her. I think that it was just she had the she had the opportunity to clarify. And it was her time to say, look, OK, I'm going to come clean. My dad's dealing with some stuff that was that was on me. Not clarifying that in the past, but I'm clarifying it now. Done. And I didn't think anything of it after I saw it. Uh, on um, whatever outlet published it. But she kind of low-key referenced it while you guys were hanging out. At what point? Well, I don't know. She would, she, like when, when the first, the first kind of big fight that you had where she was like, I'm just dealing with stuff and, you know, like I have all this responsibility. I don't know, maybe, and I, honestly, I don't know if that was an IT, like an in-the-moment kind of interview with producers or with you. It's sometimes it's hard to remember. I think you might be referencing a, like, fight in Mexico or like not so much a fight, but like her getting really worked up and feeling concerned about how this would translate once you guys both got back yeah. and sort of mentioning was family crying. as like one of the reasons mm-hmm. she was Went worried the about closet. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Were her reactions as out of the blue as it felt while watching it? Can you repeat that? that uh, were her like emotional outbursts, were they as out of the blue oh. as they came across while watching the show? Because it came across on mm-hmm. the show that she just decided to like out of nowhere mm-hmm. get mad and it it came across as a lot of like sabotage mm-hmm. you know where i'm just going to make this thing mm-hmm. into a big thing because i want out or or i don't know what her motivation is mm-hmm. but it sure felt like it came out of nowhere partially and i've been in those relationships you know where it's just like what the fuck is going on like yeah you know, like holy shit yeah you're trying your best to you know, be a caring and empathetic partner, but you're also just like, where is this coming from? You know, did you, did it feel as chaotic in being there in person as, as it did for us watching? Yes and no. Um, I believe that the, the outburst in Mexico, there were, there were a lot of moving pieces to that and there was a lot that wasn't shown. And so, uh, well, th- the cameras weren't rolling when, uh, when the, that started. And so the camera started rolling after she had, she was already in her mood. And so that was a day of drinking <laughs> and Jackie was inebriated and she got a call from her mom. Um, her mom called the producer and wanted to talk to Jackie. And that's what spiraled her. Uh, what the, the content of what her mom was saying to the producer that stays between them and that's Jackie's story to tell 
I'm in no place to say that, but I will say that that was the reason why there, there was a big outbreak. And it was because there was a lot of pressure on top of her being drunk. Um, and the, the pressure of her family life, the pressure of filming, the pressure of being in a new relationship, uh, that was a lot on her. And th I mean, that's, that's quite literally what happened in Mexico. Jackie was pretty open early on about her sex life, I suppose, or your, your, you know, he was like asking everyone who, if they had sex. And then that seemed to be a point of contention in your relationship mm -hmm. or how much. And she seemed to at least attempt to try to emasculate you or, or make some <laughs> comments. What was that like for you? What was going on in your head? Because, you know, you're, you're being called out by this woman who at the time you love and it sounds like you were trying to just build this connection kind of from a 360 mm -hmm. point of view, emotional, physical, intimate, you know, things like that. Yeah. What kind of conversations did you two have about sex and your sex life? And how did you try to get on the same page as her when she was bringing up some of these issues? Yeah. Sorry, mom. I'm a freak. Okay. Yeah. We had a lot of conversations about it and we explored that in Mexico. We explored that when we left Mexico. And it was, and you can see it in that conversation when she says, we don't have sex, bro. I'm like, that's on me. That's on me. Yeah. Because yeah. she was dealing with a feminine issue and I was waiting for her to heal. That's it. And that was really wild for her to bring that up and try to make it seem like I'm not crushing it. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm very comfortable with myself. Her bringing up uh, certain emasculating things. It like sticks and stones, bro. It doesn't hurt me. It doesn't affect me. You're, you're, you're trying to, to, to jab me and it's not, I'm sorry, it's not working because I know the type of man that I am. Yeah. I love the type of man that I am and you can never take that from me. Why do you think she did that? Only she knows. Well, if Only you had to guess, knows, why man. do you think she was trying to hurt you that way? Hurt people, hurt people. Point blank period. Yeah. Yeah. Could you talk us through the timeline of the kind of fight that you had where at one point you'd left to take some space and then when you came back she was packing up and just yeah. kind of like that back and forth it seemed like yeah. there were many different moments yeah there was one night where uh you know everything was great we were going to bed having a good time we were joking laughing whatever and then i'm getting in the bed and she uh says to me uh well i threw you under the bus in one of my interviews um i said oh Okay, what'd you say? Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, okay, what'd you say? And she told me that, um, that, there, were, that there were some behaviors that needed to change and that I needed to be more aggressive. And then she kind of just like asked me to just go in the next day and, and say on camera, I'm going to fix this and we're going to move forward. Like she asked me to roll over. And she asked you, she basically said, Hey, I threw you under the bus. I said that you need to be more aggressive in bed. And then I, and then she basically asked you to own that. And you know, what's wild is that she didn't even say aggressive in bed. She said that the, the day after she tried to clarify that she meant that she was trying to tell me to be more aggressive in bed. I thought she was telling me to be more aggressive as a man. Oh, okay. And that's why I said, what did that, what does that even like, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And so that's why I say, uh, that she, that she didn't think of me as a man because in that moment, those couple of nights prior, and I'll get to how long I left, but those couple of nights prior, that brought me to my knees. I'd done everything for this woman. I was carrying our relationship. I was cooking, cleaning, working from home, making sure that everything was good when she got back from work. I was washing her fucking clothes. I was folding her shit. I was doing all this stuff, planning the dates, trying to plan the wedding. And her telling me that brought me to my fucking knees. Yeah. That was like, I'm holding up the world already and she's adding more. I'm like, I can't do this. And so I knew that I wanted to be with her, but in that moment, I did not like her. <laughs> and I just needed to separate and take some time. So I went back to my apartment. I needed to be in a safe space. It's not that I wanted to leave and, 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 and like escape and run away. No, I just needed some time. No, I can imagine that. Yeah, you're lying in bed. She drops this on you. Yeah. And I'm assuming, listen, like I know... It's always used against people going on these shows, but like you're told not to be self aware that there is a TV show, and you're like told that you're not supposed to think about because if you do think about how people are going to react, then somehow you're you're accused of being in there for the fame or you're being yeah. disingenuous. But like, there's no way you could have 
been in that moment with Jackie where she is saying these things to you and about you and that not fuck with you. It was huge. Yeah. It was huge. And you know, that was a that was a, a a turning point for me because the blinders went away. I've always been here with Jackie. But then when she said that, they went away and I started to see a lot of shit. And such as the fact that that she I don't think that she ever respected me as a man. And especially after the reunion yesterday, when I, when, when she called me soft to Josh, like, come on, you always thought I was soft and you were, and you just, why did, why, why did you accept my proposal? But anyway, um, that's a great question. Well, it's not, yeah. yeah uh, it's, it was mind boggling to me that it got to that point. And you're very right about the, uh, about being so hyper aware about how the public is going to perceive you before it's even edited. Yeah. And you're a human being. Yeah. And, and, it, and, and it's, and it's, I didn't care about that. I was so hyper focused on our relationship. I could care about what I was saying in my interviews. And so, you know, I, I twisted some things. I, I, I said things because she didn't want to say things on camera. You know, I brought up stuff about my family that I didn't necessarily want to bring up, but the producers were asking for something. So like, hey, tell us about something. Give us something. And so I'm sitting there looking at her and she's just like tight lip. And so I'm like, okay, so my dad did this. Okay, so... I was, you know, this and that. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Again, when she said that to me, it brought me to my knees. And so I left for two days and I told her, I communicated. I said, I need two days. I'll be back. I'm not breaking up with you. I'll be back. Did you leave lines of communication open where, where it's just like, hey? Y yeah. Okay. My phone, call me. You can text me, whatever. Sure. But I just need to be in my safe space. space for a yeah. minute, you know? Because I, I hadn't seen my apartment in a while. Uh, I hadn't watered my plant. My plant was dying. <laughs> I had a lot. Of, I have ADHD too. So like, there's a lot of stuff that's going in my mind. Like, oh shoot, I should probably take out the trash. Sure. Okay, I should do this. I'm just gonna go back home and like figure this out, and then I'll come back. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you say it brought you to your knees too, because like, you know, like, um, you know, in a lot of ways too, watching you, like, you reminded of me of myself. Mm. Uh, and, and and I don't mean this in any con. Like, I'm older than you, so <laughs> uh, I'm just older. Um, but I younger me you know mm -hmm. like i i think you're a really well-intentioned guy you know i th it sounds like your character matters to you um you want to do the right thing i remember myself as a young man all those things and i had blinders on too because i wanted i wanted to be in love you know i really wanted to take care of the person mm -hmm. i love taking care of the people i love i still yeah, do yeah you same. know mm -hmm. but you know we i have I ha i've had to learn how to protect myself mm -hmm. and and I've had to learn how to set boundaries and, and, and things like that. And I had to deal with my kind of own kind of toxicity in relationships mm -hmm. of, you know, being that fixer. You know, mm -hmm. there, I think there was some honesty in your part when you kind of blurted that out where yeah. you said she looked like a project. But nevertheless, we'll get into that. But when she talked about the, the masculinity thing uh, or, or called you out, you know, hearing you talk, I'm assuming, you know, that to you, you know, being a man is a lot more than just kind of being the aggro guy out at the bar who's like willing to pick a fight with anyone who might like glance at their girl and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds like to you, like, you know, taking care of the person you love might even be laundry mm -hmm. or, you know, being kind of that emotional support system. Or as you Mitch, even said, like, you know, she didn't want to bring up stuff about her family. So you're like, you know what? I'll, t I'll take one for the team here. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm guessing for you, in your mind, you're like, I'm, I'm protecting the person I love. I'm taking care of the person I love. I'm going out of my way and I'm doing all these things. You know, I might not be like looking to pick a fight with everyone mm -hmm. or getting super toxic uh, in bed. Yeah. Did that make you doubt at all? You know, those, those two days where you thought about those things, did that get in your head in terms of, you know, because like as a guy, when, when we get called out by women, sometimes it can fuck with you. It mm -hmm. can be like, well, should I, should I be more aggressive? Should I be more aggro? Should mm -hmm. I be, you know, like, should I puff my chest out more? Mm -hmm. Like, did you struggle with any of that while, while dealing with that? Uh, no, I wasn't going to change who I was for her. Um, I think I just needed to figure out in those two days that I took, I needed to figure out if it was worth uh, working through that and allowing her the time to understand and accept me 
And that was a lot of the internal conversations that I had with myself when I was, when I was in my apartment for two days, staring at the ceiling, asking all myself the damning questions that I didn't ask myself in the pods. Was it worth it? And should I continue? And ultimately, I came to the decision that this is just a relationship that I'm willing to go through the ebbs and flows of uh, because I was going to leave with her. That, that, was, that was my mindset. Sure. I guess my question to you in that state of mind, what was it about the relationship with Jackie or what was it about Jackie that you were still willing to fight for? Definitely, you know, and, and this, is, this is terrible, but it's, it, it was the potential. I, I, I saw everything inside of her and I, I could, I saw myself in Jackie, you know, like there was a lot of stuff that I felt like I had worked through that she hadn't quite gotten to that point mm -hmm. that I could be the catalyst yeah. to help her get to that point. Very naive lesson learned people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I quite literally like she, she is a, um, oral surgeon assistant. And in Mexico, she had her book studying for um, her anesthesiology. Um, not anesthesiology, but she could administer anesthetic. She was and, studying the Yeah. And I'm like- The material. I'm like, you're taking an exam to administer anesthetics. Why don't you, don't you want to be an anesthesiologist? You could be an anesthesiologist. You're a super smart girl. You're already studying the stuff. Take it a step further. You don't have to box yourself in being an oral surgeon assistant for your entire career, you can take this to the next level. And she Did just, you ask her though, before you said that? I asked her, I said, I said, do you, do you see yourself going further than that? Okay. And she said, no. And I said, well, no, you can do that. You can do this. I believe in you. <laughs> I hear you. But this is where you remind me of younger me. Let's hear it. <laughs> well, I've had to learn <laughs> as, as, you know, as a guy who likes to help and fix and well-intentioned yeah. that not everyone's me and, and being our best selves and reaching our full potential can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Yeah. And so I think, well, that type of language can come across as well-intentioned in your mind. Mm -hmm. It can feel kind of condescending to those people receiving it because yeah. it can feel like here you are, you know, Jackie could have been someone who's like very proud of herself, crushing it. Like maybe she's literally fulfilling a dream when it comes mm -hmm. to like, I just, I always wanted to, to work in yeah. the dental field and I always want to do this, but I don't fucking love school and nor do I want to be a fucking dentist because being mm -hmm. a dentist means running a fucking business mm -hmm. and having other people report to you. But what I can do is as a dental, uh, a surgical dental assistant, as I can have this job and have the quality of life that allows me to maybe be a mom or a wife or other hobbies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's just one of those things where I've had to learn that kind of balance between, yeah. you know, first ask those questions about like, hey, you know, that's really cool. What made you want to do that? That's mm -hmm. that's that's amazing. You yeah. know, is that where do you want to? You know, is that is that what you want to do? And yeah. just without making it feel, without making that person immediately feel like what they're doing isn't good enough. It's very nuanced. Yeah. Yeah, and so. You know, as someone with that mentality, I would I would challenge you and urge you in, in the future to take a beat. Yeah, Nick, I've learned my lesson, yeah. man. Hundred yeah. percent, I've learned my lesson on that. Because um, <laughs> I hear you. I mean, I yeah. again, I I I I, <laughs> I I've been you. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, multiple times, <laughs> and um, it's just it's just something that I think as men we can get better at yeah. in terms okay. of of just being supportive through encouragement and there is a time and a place for um challenging our partners to see their full potential mm -hmm. but it's also really important to acknowledge what they are doing what they have done yeah. and make them feel uh like you're really proud of of what they're currently doing without immediately suggesting what else they could be doing yeah and 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 that was me projecting as well because i'm always thinking about self-growth and sure. opportunities yeah. to move forward and better myself. I hear you. And I projected yeah. it out to her unfairly. Yeah. 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 Listen, I've I've done it multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> um, done it in my thirties. So <laughs> you know, you're ahead of me. Even the rich. That's right. You know them. You love them. All the amazing stories of some of your favorite celebrities and the behind the scenes stories of how they become rich and famous and all the drama in between. Even the rich is the podcast from Wondering that tells you the jaw dropping stories about the tumultuous lives of the world's elite from the greatest family dynasties to pop culture superstars 
Having unimaginable wealth unlocks a world of which most of us could only dream. But once you get past the red carpet galas and private vacations, it can get a little darker as well. The most recent season of Even the Rich explored Lucia Ball's meteoric rise to fame as the first female sitcom star and studio exec despite periods of soul-crushing rejection in a husband with a wondering eye. There's also a season about Madonna. They have uh, also, they have the Murdoch family. They have a Whitney Houston. They also have Dolly Parton. They have Mariah Carey. The list goes on. Janet Jackson, one of my favorite episodes of, yeah. uh, for Even the Rich. Ooh, How wow. a wardrobe malfunction Ooh. literally made her like headlines and why she was the only one blamed wow. for that. Wild stuff. So much of that and more. Even the Rich is a podcast from Wondery that tells the jaw-dropping stories about the tumultuous lives of the world's elite from the greatest family dynasties to pop culture superstars. Listen to Even the Rich on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcasts. Breaking news, I'm a lord. I will now make my employees refer to me as Lord Nick. Through established titles, I have become a lord. Established title is a novelty gift that helps to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland and supports global reforestation efforts. It's a fun project based on historic Scottish customs where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. Title packs can serve at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and you receive a certificate with a crest and unique plot number. Established Titles works with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for the Future to plant a tree with every order and support reforestation efforts around the world. Some people have changed their titles to Lord or Lady on their credit card, plane ticket, or even dating profiles. It makes a great last-minute gift and an amazing conversation starter as well. Like This is such an amazing gift to someone, the perfect gift to give to people, but you don't know what to give them. They can hang it up. You know, there's a. You, I know you guys know a lot of people who would get off on being called a lord. I'm one of them. I'm talking about the dads out yeah. there. Like- all the dads out there, lord dad, lady dad, for all the moms out there. It's a great Father's Day gift, especially if, if, uh, for all the people who just care a little bit about this thing called our planet. Also, the first 200 people who purchased their title after using your link, Nick, they will be next to your dedicated plot. So yeah. you'll be neighbors in Who Scotland. wants to be my neighbor? Yeah. It makes an amazing last minute gift. Established Title is running a massive spring sale right now. Plus, if you use the code TVF, that's TVF, to get an additional 10% off, do me a favor and check out EstablishedTitles.com slash TVF. That's Tom Victor Fox to get your gifts now. When did you realize that Josh was still a threat? A threat? I don't know if that's the right word for it. I, w- I wouldn't call well, it a threat. I mean, a threat to your relationship. <laughs> you know? um, I mean, like, I don't, I'm not trying to like, but like, as far as your relationship with Jackie, I mean, yeah. listen, I don't think you would end up with Jackie regardless. Yeah, so yeah. sure. Like, it wasn't, like you weren't, I don't think you guys are compatible. Yeah. That's very just my, evident. yeah, very evident. Yeah. But ult- ultimately, Josh mm-hmm. and her had a connection, uh, not a threat to you, but a threat to the relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When did you realize that he was still in the picture as it relates to Jackie? Man. Uh, It's funny because um, when we got back from Mexico and we were sequestered uh, before going to the shared living space, we got our phones back and we were able to see everyone's Instagram and all that stuff. And so um, uh, she was looking through Josh's stuff and she was just like, ew, ew, ew. I was like, oh, okay. well, she doesn't find him attractive. Done deal. I'm good. Good to move forward. Interesting. And so then it turned into he pulls up to Chelsea's birthday party. I honestly had forgotten about Josh up to that point. And because we had been in no communication, uh, we hadn't gone out altogether. Like I was so focused on Jackie that nothing else really mattered. And so when he showed up, I was like, oh, I see what's happening here. This is, this is going to be some drama. And it was. Um, I saw them having a conversation. I didn't feel threatened by him then uh, because I knew that he was drunk and he was going to say some stuff. Do your thing, bro. And then at that point, we were already almost at the door. So, you know, and that's why I said, if you can take her from me, you can have her. And so I'm glad that they're happy together now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Sure. We love a good timeline. I love a good timeline. There's been a lot of debate online, um, even by Jackie, because Jackie was all defensive up in her uh, posts or whatever she was putting it out there. She blamed editing on the timeline. And that, you know, 
in terms of letting the you coffee know, date the, didn't happen mm-hmm. when it did. Yeah, but then when she was ending things with but you, but when she, she was said ending I'd... with you, she made it very clear to you that she had met up with with Josh. Yeah. Um, I think looking back on it, I think she may have been recalling uh, meeting him at the um, at the party. Although she had told me everything she that he said. very specifically, yeah. we met up. Not- no, she, she said, I just saw Josh. And so I think what that meant was that was her first time seeing him in person. Okay. And so I, I think that it is unfortunate that whatever the internet is saying, it's, it's like she's getting berated for it. But, you know, at the end of the day, they got to tell a story. And so sure. that made the most sense to put that there to, to kind of weaponize that against her. I don't, I don't really remember what that timeline was. I okay. have my own theories, but what are your theories? I mean, my theory was, is that they, uh, Chelsea's party was on a Wednesday. The tux fitting in the, uh, dress shopping was on a Friday. And I had a theory that they met that Thursday because we were supposed to film on Thursday on that Thursday. Uh, but she skated. She said that she had to go, um, and see her dad in the hospital. He had fell and hit his head. And I was, oh, shoot. Yeah, go do your thing. Go off and do your thing. But then later on, I'm like, oh, well, you came in the house, didn't say anything to anybody. Okay, cool. You go upstairs and you grab makeup and hair gel and a brush. Uh, okay, cool. But you're going to go see your dad in the hospital? Hope he's okay. And I pray that she didn't, that that's not a lie. But But you wonder if maybe she, that was... Maybe, Not maybe. totally transparent on her part. The whole filming at the coffee shop, I, I do actually know for a fact that they did meet um, the, uh, the day after uh, the tux and dress gotcha. fitting. For a fact, 100%. Film, they filmed that, but they, we yeah, don't they filmed know that, for but we don't a fact know, right. we don't what know they, if they were met doing. Or w- whatever beforehand. They could have been texting, calling. Yeah. You guys, it, that's the thing about Love is Blind is that you got, y'all live in the same city. Yeah. When you're on The Bachelor, for example... The whole show is one big bubble where love is blind. Like, I don't know, half of the show is a a bubble, but half of the show is you guys living your life. Yeah. You know, doing your thing. Mm -hmm. And then you guys film in between your life. Yeah. Yeah. So she could have been doing literally anything with Josh. No, 100%. And, 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 and so if that was, that was her prerogative to explore that fine. Um, and the way that it ended, I think, it doesn't matter. In my opinion, it doesn't matter if it was a day before or the day after or three days after, whatever. It doesn't matter. You literally just broke up with me and you're kissing another guy, accepting his, his advance to be his, his girlfriend after of, so that, that I, I meant nothing to you then. She, she certainly acted as such. I meant nothing to you. Yeah. Okay. And that's why I asked for the ring back. Yeah. Let's get into the ring. Yeah. What what the hell is she talking about? At at what point? At the reunion? The the <laughs> Marshall's the, like when? <laughs> yeah. The well the, the whole ring well first uh when she said she's not going to give it back to you because when she accepted it she meant it. Mm-hmm. What was going on in your head? Because yeah. I And do you guys get to keep like cuz in Bachelor world uh, you you I don't heard. you don't get to keep. I heard if you don't last a certain period of time, mm-hmm. you guys get to keep the rings. Uh, y- y- I mean, yeah. Um, so this was a literal fight for a ring. Yeah, and and so let me be incredibly clear. Let me clear this up. I did not pay for the ring. Period. No, yeah, none we of us s- paid assu- for the we ring. Assumed as much, and so but- I did not ask her for the ring back for monetary gain or monetary value. I asked for it back because it was sentimental value. It meant something to you. It meant something to me. Yeah. You're throwing this away. That shit means nothing to you. Give it back. You don't deserve to keep that. Because it felt like she might say, go pawn it and, and monetize your pain. Mm-hmm. And if, if she still has it, great. If she doesn't, great. But the matter of the fact is that I wanted to keep it because I wanted a memento of all the stuff that I'd gone through. We had a chance to sort through rings and pick it out. I picked that out for her. I thought of her when I saw it. I asked her what kind of ring she wanted and, and, and how she, like, did you want a gold band? I had to ask the ring people because the picture, well, the first ring that I saw was in white gold. She wanted it in yellow gold. 
I asked them specifically to bring it back to me in yellow gold. That was a custom thing I asked for. Yeah. I went through a lot for that ring. <laughs> and although it's a very it's a very short blip in the timeline, that meant a lot to me. Sure. Yeah, I understand that. You know, yeah. like that I don't take I'm, I'm an assuming, engagement yeah. lightly. At the time, I mean at the time she was treating your relationship as well, not like it meant all that much. Yeah. Like just kind of dismissing it all entirely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and having already seemingly moved on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and what did she say at the reunion? She said that, uh, well, Vanessa asked if she still has it. She says, yes, ma'am, I still have it. And I don't remember. I'd That's weird. Tune that shit out. Yeah. How does Joshy Poo feel about that? I don't know, but <laughs> she was clutching onto his arm real tight. Yeah. Hmm. They're, they're in love. I'm happy for him. You don't have to be happy for him. No, I am. Genuinely, I'm, I'm happy for them. Genuinely. Well, good for you. Yeah. Nice of you. What, what do you, why? Because I've moved on. Okay. <laughs> you know, and, and that's just the type of guy that I am. I don't hold grudges. I don't, like, if you cross me, okay. What did you think about those text messages her alleged friends released? It, it was, it tracked. It was, it was pretty on brand. Um, because that's the stuff that she would say to me. And, and I thought that it was joking. Uh, I mean, she, because she kind of low key questioned your sexuality in those text messages, which were pretty, it was kind of, yeah. And, and <clears throat> kind of gross on her part. Nick, she, she, she would say, uh, certain things to me, but I thought it was in jest. And, but now that is now that she was saying it to her friends, I realized that she actually meant that shit. Do you think Jackie's toxic? She has toxic tendencies, toxic traits, yeah. But she, I don't think that she's a 100% toxic person. Do you think she recognizes her toxicity? Mm-mm. What do you think makes someone toxic? Not holding yourself accountable when you should. <laughs> and gaslighting someone into making them believe that you're a villain in your own story. If, if Jackie has toxic tendencies, mm -hmm. and you don't think she's aware of her toxic tendencies, mm -hmm. and she's doing nothing to work on those tendencies, why can't we just call her toxic? Because that's a label. Nick, I don't label people. <laughs> you label behavior, not the individuals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot. Of, fair enough. <laughs> and, and that's just a buzzword. People say, oh, that's, you're toxic. No, you got toxic traits. Okay, sure. I don't know. I think some people just are toxic. I think inherently they, if they're not doing anything about it, you know, I, I think that's better than saying you know, like narcissist. That people love throwing that shit around. But yeah, if, if, you are, if you are demonstrating toxic traits on a regular basis and you are constantly finding an excuse for your behavior while simultaneously finding reasons to blame other people to justify your own actions, and there is a pattern there, mm -hmm. then I, I, I personally, just me personally, I would see that person as toxic. Mm -hmm. And we can get into the semantics of whether they're toxic or they have toxic yeah, traits, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I would yeah. just be like, yeah. I don't want to fuck with that person. If I had to They're label, not good for me to be around. If I had to label it, I would say she's unwilling. unwilling. She's an un, she's an unwilling person, unwilling to accept her traits, accept her flaws, and hold herself accountable. If I could label her, I think unwilling is probably the best I would use. Unwilling. Very generous. Yeah. <laughs> You're a nice guy, Marshall. <laughs> well, thank you, Nick. <laughs> what has this experience taught you about yourself that makes you? realize you have things to work on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we talked about a little bit of it and uh, you know, that Bob the builder trait can't have that <laughs> shit anymore. <laughs> Captain save them all. Can't save them all. Yeah. And one of the biggest lessons that I learned is that I, ha I can only control and regulate myself and my emotions and I can't worry or even give a fuck about what other people think, you know? Yeah. And, and how they're feeling. Yeah. yeah. How are going forward in a dating situation, how do you feel like you're going to recognize someone that you are attracted to that might need a little bit more fixing than they, they should? You know, like how are you going to recognize that going forward? Because yeah. I can tell you from personal experience, like it's in your blood, man. Mm -hmm. And my guess is in the future, whether you're aware about it or not, you will, there will just be something about people that you're attracted to your ability to help them out mm -hmm. you know um so how do you feel like you're going to be able to recognize that listening to them and there's certain buzzwords that people throw out um who are actively working on themselves heal healing healed is a, is a big one 
Um, if they're in therapy, green flag. Uh, Are you in therapy? <laughs> I have been in therapy. Yeah. What else? Uh, yeah, just 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 taking what they say and. When, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Yeah. Maya Angelou. I feel like Marshall should do something on the call map. I was like, that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Read me a story. <laughs> In a world. <laughs> I am kind of curious about Brett. Um, and I just know that that was a really close friendship. And so from your vantage point, it seemed like, you know, we almost didn't talk about Brett and Tiffany because they were just so exemplary in all yeah, these ways. Yeah. And it was just such a beautiful relationship. Yeah. And it was like, what kind of shit is there to stir about this? Like zero. Yeah. Um, and so I'm curious, like just from your perspective, like were there any points where that relationship maybe had growing moments or trials and tribulations that they navigated together? Or kind of like, what was it like from your perspective? Yeah, man, Brett and Tiffany are the example. They had navigated their normal relationship ebb and flow masterfully. They didn't involve anyone else. Whatever they dealt with, they dealt with. And if they wanted to talk about it, they talked about it. And so I don't really know if they had any like points of contention. But I do know that Tiffany moving from Seattle to Portland was a big issue. Not a big issue, but it was a big part of their story. And the way that Brett handled it, I think he should teach a masterclass on making someone feel safe and heard. Brett is quite literally the, he's iconic in my mind. Uh, he's, he's, he's my big brother. And I take a lot of, I look up to him in those moments because of the grace that he gave himself and Tiffany. Well, there was that moment where Tiffany was being emotional. We talked about this on a recap. And, and uh, most people, and I would include myself, um, and the, certainly in the past, would have tried to find solutions. Bob the Builder hat. And your boy just listened. He just sat there. He said nothing. He was just there and supportive. And like that, that's kind of the energy I was talking about earlier. And I think it's just, it's not instinctual mm -hmm. uh, for, for a lot of us guys to do that. Yeah. Um, Brett is a Brett, stone cold killer. Brett has, <laughs> you know, I don't. I'd be curious to ask him where he learned that or if that's always yeah. been something that he has done, but um, he's de clearly demonstrated a, an ability to not always feel the need to, to fix or explain or mm. problem solve, but rather just be there in support. Yeah. 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 Can you explain to me Kwame? Man. Because as a man, it looks like he hates his wife. <laughs> no, 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 no. Kwame. I, I'm just watching TV. Yeah, man. I know. I, just, like, I know. Looks I know. like he hates his wife. There was a lot. Um, that that went into Kwame and Chelsea's relationship. Kwame lift, left everything in Portland for Chelsea. And I think that speaks a lot to his character because he was a guy that, that very much flew by the seat of his pants. If he wanted to be in Mexico for half the year, he went to Mexico for half the year. Yeah. And him giving that up, as well as his friends, his, his home in Portland, his soccer, he left all of that for Chelsea. Yeah, that's... he is a stand-up guy. He really is. And but is he happy? I, I, yes, he is. I would I would say Kwame is happy. He has gone through his his periods of 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 figuring it out, just like all of us would. And I I truly believe he is happy. Did yeah. you personally think in watching the show back and seeing the conversations that he had with Micah? Like, just from your standpoint, did you feel like that was in kind of murky waters or crossed any lines? Or do you think that was blown out of proportion? Yeah, no, I, I will say this to Kwame's face. That was fucked up. Um, but I understand because there was a lot of alcohol at that party. And yeah, a, that seems to be the thing. That's what we've yeah, heard. That's what we've heard. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of alcohol up. at that party. And that was the first time seeing the other women or seeing the other people like the men seeing the women for the first time the women seeing the men for the first time so his feelings that he felt for micah in the pods were real and seeing her for the first time that probably drummed up some shit and he did the, and he navigated the best he could in the midst of an alcoholic bend bender or whatever you know <laughs> tequila bender <laughs> uh what did you think of uh we of the uh, the Paul little ass grab flick that they showed at the reunion, man, because I don't that, know about that. Looks that. dirty. I don't know, man. Yeah, you you know. explain it to me because as a guy, yeah, I don't know how I can how I can. Yeah, Paul's my guy. I'm just like how, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, and and quite honestly, because that looks like a guy who unnecessarily 
touched a woman, which yeah. happens all the time. Yeah, Guys yeah, be yeah. doing that all yeah. at the bars, just like, I'm going to put my hand on your hip, you know? Yeah. It's like, no, you don't need to put your hand on anyone's hip. You, you, can, you can walk through the crowd Without. Like, are you doing this in the urinals That's when right you're now. passing so, by someone? So, like, like, I'm, 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 I'm not going to speak too much to this because, I mean, that's whatever the fuck that is. But that looks. I will he was say, already halfway out the door. I will say though, <laughs> I will say that I personally have done that because if I'm like rolling Why? past, rolling past someone, and I'm like, oh, sorry, I think his hand placement was fucked up. <laughs> I would have gone Why? a little higher. But, no, but why would I would have did a shoulder tap? You do that with guys? Yeah, oh yeah, bro. Let me get past you, bro. And I pat him on the back, especially in the club. On the back, especially. Yeah, no. But, the, but, but guys, I saw it this weekend. I saw guys be put for tucking, touching women's hips, and no guys are, are touching my hip. You know? <laughs> yeah, no. I but, say, I, mean, I say the hand does, placement. It, it's like it is an instinct. It's like it, you see his shoulder touch her, so then it's kind of like an apologetic. Sorry about that. But the hand placement. The hand, the hand to be placement higher. is wrong. The hand placement <laughs> is wrong. However, let's just move on from that because that is that it is that. Let the internet handle that. That's not my place to talk about. <laughs> Marshall. <laughs> I feel like that's a soundbite. Let the internet handle you're that. You're a character witness here. <laughs> Answer me this. If, if that were sus, you think that would be an out of character moment for Paul then? I don't think Paul w- would have slapped the bridesmaid's booty. No, I don't think he would have done that. No. <laughs> but he did. That's what it looks like, Nick. I don't like it. That's what it looks like, Nick. Uh. But I will say that it was the hand placement. All right. It was the hand placement. Very, very poor placement of your hands, buddy. Yeah. Got to go higher. Guys, stop touching women's hips out in crowds. You don't need to. It's PSA. unnecessary. <laughs> they don't like it. They fucking hate it. You don't need to balance. <laughs> I don't know. Like, you don't need to guide yourself through <laughs> the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you at now in your life? Yeah. Where's, yeah. What's your love life This was a year now? ago. Where's your love life? Yeah. Where's your, where's yeah. your heart? Yeah. So um, I, I have been seeing someone, um, but... The, with all of this new incoming life or whatever this is, I don't know how to navigate it as me. And I need to take some time to figure myself out because I can't pour into myself right now. So how am I possibly going to pour into a relationship? Does she know that? Yeah, we've... we've so we've, you're not seeing her? Because that, that sounds like some fuckboy shit. No, no, no. We, we've, we've it's talked like we're seeing about, each other, but I need to work on myself. Come on, Nick. Don't label me, bro. I'm just... I, I'm not I'm trying very, to. I'm actually very communicative. But you get what I'm saying, though. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, we, we, we have all these people call in and they're seeing these guys and then it's like they say they like me and we're dating, but like, they can't right now. And listen, I would understand yeah. why your head and heart is where it's at. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, are you emotionally available or are you not emotionally available to the people you're seeing right now? Oh, I'm always going to be emotionally available. We've talked about all of that. However, it's just navigating this world and being a regular person four weeks ago or how many weeks ago, now being transitioned to a not so regular person. It's difficult. I hear you. Yeah. It's very difficult. And so I don't know how to navigate that right now. And so I don't, I don't, I don't know how to be a public figure, if that's the word for it. I don't know how to be that. Um, and it was actually brought to me. So my fraternity brother actually put this in very simple layman's terms for me. And I'm graduating from high school and I'm going to college. And there's all this new experience and, and I have to figure out the campus. I have to figure out where my classes are. I have to know where my dorm is at. And I have to figure that out by myself right now. However, I do believe that, that I am not closing myself off to love. Not at all. So as it stands with this new person, where, how would you label it? In, in, our, in my mind, it's complicated and I should uncomplicate it and make things very simple for her because I feel like that there are, that there's you know, points of contention between us. And I feel like she's going to write into and ask Nick and be like, I'm in a situation ship with this guy. <laughs> yeah. With this you know, reality I, star. I really yeah. like him. You know, yeah, but he's gone through a lot and she's going to spend all this time like, yeah. empathizing with you. We literally had an ask Nick a, caller we, of someone who'd we, been on a reality show. And she's yeah. the same. Like, and, well, so, and that's one of the biggest points for me is I don't know how to navigate being so public. It's like, like I'm exposed in, and, and like, I don't know if I want to be in an exposed relationship with someone that I met in private. I could see if I had gone the distance with Jackie and we were in a relationship now. We both signed up for that, you know, but I met this woman in private and mm-hmm. she's a very private person. And so I don't, I don't know how to navigate that with her quite yet. And I don't even know how to navigate myself. So I'm putting myself first. Well, that's great. Yeah. So 
Can I offer you some advice? Yes, please. I, I would just communicate that with her very directly. Yeah. And then I wouldn't, um, you know how in like dating situations, we're like, hey, listen, I'm just going through a lot right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm dealing with, I need to work on myself. And then we think us letting them know that mm-hmm. is enough. Mm-hmm. It but isn't. it isn't because then they'll say, well, you know, I want to be there for you. Mm-hmm. If you know that you need to work on yourself and you know, like, because she's not going to fix you, right? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. She, she, she can't, she didn't go through this experience with you, right? Right. So if you know that you need to work on yourself and you know, you need, and which is normal, you need to take some time to process, like, you, you, ha- you kind of have to be the bad guy. You kind of have to say, like, right now, I'm literally not. You can't leave the door open for them to kind of come and go. Yeah. And because you're like, hey, well, I told them. I told them that I need to take things slow. Yeah. I, need, I told them that I'm not ready right now. It's manipulative. And they keep showing up. Mm-hmm. So it's like not on me. Yeah. You know, it's very I just manipulative. think you need, yeah. to, you, kinda, you need to be the one who says, I really can't right now. Yeah. And it's because, and I don't want to lead anyone on. Yeah. And, and you, you kind of have, you have to be the bad guy, so yeah. to speak. Um, because otherwise it turns into like, you know, it turns in, it's a, it's a situation shit waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. And she's going to think of you as a fuck boy. Yeah. And she's going to make a TikTok six months from now. Yeah. You know, but yeah. it's tough. I get where you're at. But I think in a lot of situations, we see these with like a, a lot of dating situations, especially with guys, where they think they're being upfront, and in a way they are, but they use that upfrontness as an excuse to allow that person mm. to still try mm-hmm. in a situations where deep down you know mm. it's not worth them trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's real. Yeah, that's real. I appreciate that. I just you know. Yeah. I appreciate that. Respect it's yourself. Insight. All right. We do this thing called texting office hours. We have people call in, write in, and for okay. the sake of time, we're just going to read you a written story. Okay. And we're going to offer this person of advice. We'd love, to use some, love for you to use some of your wisdom, your knowledge, the things that you've been through, the therapy that you've worked through to help solve this. We're, as a collective, we're going to try to write, uh, solve Solving this person's mysteries. problem. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Pitch a bunch of solutions so take it away. here. Yeah. Okay, so this is someone writing in on behalf of their friend, Jenna. So Jenna is 22 and a senior at college in Nashville and has been dating a new guy for a few weeks. She's been considering ending things with him because they don't know each other very well, conversation isn't flowing, and she just doesn't think they're equipped for the fast approaching long distance they will be forced into come graduation. An old flame of Jenna's is newly single. Jenna and this old flame were best friends. He confessed his love for her. She turned him down. He started dating someone else. And they've been dating for a few years until now when he ended things. Turning this guy down is one of Jenna's greatest regrets. I personally think she's in love with him. She feels more herself around him than anyone else. And when she looks at him, she can visualize their future. He reached out to her this week. They cut off and she said she thought they both could, quote, feel it. Her current guy is hot and smart, but old flame is, quote, soulmate vibes. All this to say, these two guys are in the same frat, and Jenna is attending a frat event in the next few weeks as the date of her current guy. Jenna. But Old Flame uh, will also be there. Jenna. Jenna has zero idea what to do. Does she end things with the current guy before or after the event? Does she end things with the current guy at all? Does she hang out with, new, with Old Flame before ending things with current guy? Does she make her decision about current guy contingent on the future with Old Flame? Where does she go from here? Jenna. Have them show Marshall. up to your sorority house. There's take it, one rose. Take it away, Marshall. <laughs> Jenna. Jenna. I don't know. I think the, the, them being in the same fraternity complicated things uh, to the point where I'm like, eh, you should probably not date both of them, either of them, uh, in my opinion. Either? I don't think you should because that's, I don't know how, but then it's like there's a little context missing. So who, who knew who first? The old flame. How long have they known each other? Because uh, that, that kind of determines oh, wow. whether, you know, that's, that's a lot. I don't personally, I don't want to give any bad advice, but I will say if I were in your shoes and I was dating someone who was in a sorority with the same girl, old flame, whatever, I personally wouldn't do it um, because I understand those, that, that dynamic of being in a fraternity or, or a sorority, whatever you want to call I understand that dynamic. I understand hopping and jumping ship and doing this. You don't want to be labeled a homie hopper, even if it is an old flame. But I just think there's some context missing there. 
I would love to hear more. You about think, that. okay. So but the... if she's only been dating the new guy for a few weeks, that's, I think, also some. Oh, in... a few weeks. Uh, okay. The new one oh, is very okay. new. Yeah. It was just, the, it's the, old well, flame you, was the, in the, a longer. The, the fraternity, like, I wasn't in a fraternity or a sorority. I, you seem to be more familiar with that culture, but I get mm-hmm. what you're saying. It's, it's, I, I'm guessing there's, it can be gossipy, rumor mill. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, want to stay away like, from that stuff. Yeah. You, you want to stay away from, Jumping to to different she members of like the fraternity. A, is she in a a kind of a a, a sorority? You know, that's like a t- affiliated with this fraternity. You know how sometimes there's connections. Yeah, they do like a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there. I don't think you're usually linked forever. You'll do like no, events I'm just saying, with them. But... but if she is in a sorority, to Marshall's point, I can understand the context that Marshall offers, which is it's a tight community. But I think in to play the play devil's advocate on that it's very common for people to switch i mean there was one guy in a frat who was like trying to date both me and a girl who lived on my floor without us knowing like it's close but it's not unheard of to like constantly be swapping around if we're basing if we're taking the 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 letter at face value i mean she said that rejecting that guy was one of her life's biggest regrets (laughs) yeah uh, well then well then at that point i think that that's 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 fair to explore that but still, and the new, and the new just, guy is hot. That's that's hot and smart. But the conversation smart. isn't flowing, and they're not getting to know each other well. So she likes his resume. That's yeah, it. yeah. Jenna, explore the old flame, but be careful. So how would you End recommend? First. Yeah. So how would you? So there's this how, event. How bad does she want to go to the event? <sighs> that's a good question. Like, is it like too soon? Is it the party of all parties, or is it just an event? Because she doesn't it, need to go the So it's the an event. event, but this is, she's about to graduate. It's, and so I think there's like a lot and of you nostalgia. you save your budget for the last event of the year. And it's usually good. Frat, frat events. Oh. Wait until after. <laughs> she wants to go to this party. Go to the party. Wait until after. Don't talk to either of them at the party. Done. Well, she's going Have as your a fun. date. She has to go as a date. going as the plus one. Of- Pick somebody else. She's not guaranteed. Be impartial. A- Pick someone who so is we want neutral. So re- we <laughs> recommend her to use the first guy to get access to the date. Make... Other guy jealous. That's messy. Don't I do think it. Don't do it. If you go the right it, thing to if do. You, if you know someone else in this fraternity and they don't have a date and you want to go to the, you really want to go to the party, then ask them to go. But if you can skip out on the party, don't just do it. Don't go. I think go. the odds of Old Flame inviting her to the party are high though because clearly he's reached out. They had this whole conversation. I think there's a world in which she could very politely, amicably, nicely end things with new guy yeah, yeah. and still show up and as then, the other guys did? I think she yeah. has to be I think that's honest, too soon I think, but I think she has to be honest she these are like, big needs events to be like listen like this guy breaking <laughs> I up I was like no you want to be at this party <laughs> you do uh, you do oof. but um, what if she was like honest with the new guy about why she was ending it was like listen I know this is like so shitty no he doesn't even but know but there's a guy well cause then he's gonna see her dating his friend after the fact and I think it's better to get ahead of the narrative and to be like I know this is really shitty Here's what and I bad timing for you but he's now single she's not I've for two weeks it. I and, and she's also 22 and she's 22 can, you can make mistakes mm-hmm. you're in this you know, your love is blind and you were engaged but you're the guy she's dating you're the hot smart guy you're not the old flame in a way, I just I only point that out because if I say I and I, it's different. But this new she's dating for two weeks. Uh, How uh, much weeks? A we we weeks. know it's plural. We don't know if it's two, but yeah, a few weeks. A few weeks. A Could few, be six. A few Could weeks. Be seven. Let's say it's a month. Yeah, I don't know. If she really needs to say. Uh, does she need to say? Just say it's not working. But I feel like you have to get point. ahead of the narrative because. What if we just? I think she's up. She needs to be upfront with the other guy. Hey. Okay, she breaks up with current guy, mm-hmm. goes to the old flame, and says, "Hey, surprise! I want to, I want to, I want to see what's up here. Let's mm-hmm. let's explore this." And he's like, "Great, there's this party." He's like, "Yeah, I know about the party." She should then tell old flame, "Well, did you know I was dating?" She he must know. Old flame knows she's been dating someone probably, right? So, and it's his fraternity, it's his problem. Mm-hmm. Be like, do you think we should go? Or how about we just do our own thing? And maybe he plans, you know. He's not skipping that for anybody. His seat, no. Okay, then that's his problem. But he let him decide. Mm. It's his party. Yeah. If they break up, is he going to go find another date? Oh, this is new guy? We're not worried about new guy. Yeah. New no. guy be old fine. flame? He's hot and smart. He'd yeah. be fine. 
You'll find someone to go. Yeah. I think they're you all going to so? end up at like the top of the Sears yeah. Tower together. Who, the new guy will find somebody new? Or Yeah, sure. He'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah. Apparently he's hot and smart. They'll all know? be fine. They're, they're seniors in college. Like, whatever. But I, I think she breaks up with the new guy mm-hmm. because all he is is hot and smart to her and he can't, she can't hold a conversation. The biggest regret of her life. So clearly she should pursue that. Don't, like, the opportunity is right there. And as far as the party goes, let, let Old Flame decide. What's, what he thinks is best. It's, he's familiar with the fraternity. He's familiar with the people. He's familiar with how dramatic he thinks it might be. Right. Let him decide if it's smart if you two go. And um, the only thing is if, if she decides to go, does she need to give the current guy a heads up? I mean, I would say so. It would be the nice thing to do. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 I would say so. Yeah. Be like, yeah. I know this is awkward, but I just wanted to give you a yeah. heads up. There you go, Jenna. You have yeah. your marching orders. Yeah. That's what I would do. Go for it. <laughs> Marshall, I know you got to get going. I uh, really appreciate your time. What are any, any final thoughts you want to leave with us uh, about your experience, uh, your future? What's next? Yeah. Any, thought, um, any, any final messages for Josh and Jackie? <laughs> no final messages. For them, I just really hope that that they um, can we can just debt this and drop it and move on. Um, I think that's what's best for all of us at this point, for everyone's uh, for everyone's mental health. Um, hopefully, you know the internet bounces back and they can find some silver lining in their story and they can they can be nice to Jackie. Uh, she's she's not a terrible person. She's done some bad things, but she's not a terrible person, and she deserves to have some kind of positivity on her page and not just. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. Hope we can just move on. We don't have to be friends, but we also don't have to be enemies. Done. Well, it was very, very gracious of you to say, Marshall. Where can the audience find you? Where can they follow you on social media? Yeah, follow me on the gram. Follow me on the top. It's my first name, last name. Uh, Remind people. Marshall Glaze. There you go. At Marshall Glaze on TikTok, on Instagram, or you can follow me on Twitter. I don't really do too much on Twitter, but Marshall T. Glaze on Twitter. Well, we thank Marshall for being so generous uh, with that, uh, all the information he gave us. Uh, We have an exciting week ahead. Uh, Micah joins us on Thursday for Going Deeper, an excellent conversation with her about the whole ass pat of it all, her her friendship picker, some details with Paul uh, that happened, you know, that we didn't talk about at the reunion, a real great episode with that. Uh, we also have, um, if you listen, if you haven't listened to Ask Nick last, uh, yet, it's an amazing episode uh, that dropped yesterday. Uh, and then for all the people who love the updates, we behind Vile Files Plus, we have an amazing update for you uh, from our first caller and more. But it's wild. You, you do not want to miss it. Uh, check out Vile Files Plus, the seven day free trial. You will not regret it. It's amazing. All episodes of Better Date Than Never, update specials. We have our pop extra on there. Do not miss it. Marshall, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you back on Thursday. 